Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars and you're watching what will probably be the last episode uh, from the Luthiers Workbench in 2018. Uh, we're coming up on the end of the year, Christmas and all that good fun stuff. So it's been really busy and unfortunately I haven't had time to shoot a, any of my how-to videos. So this episode is going to be more of just kind of an update of what I'm currently working on and all of which relates to what's coming down the road. So if you're not interested in updates, you can you know move along. But uh, if you want to get a kind of an idea of what's coming, and I've got some interesting stuff that's going to be happening uh, probably after the first of the year, then I encourage you to stick around. So what I'm currently working on, this is one of my Highline um, Echo double cutaway guitars. And for this project, I am going to be demonstrating the application of Solar Res, I can't believe it's not lacquer. And I had actually hoped to do that for this episode, but um, as it turns out, I have done some uh, testing with the product and while I've been testing it, I know that there's some other luthiers out there who are also testing the product, and we're providing feedback on the product to the folks at Solar Res. And as they've been gathering this, this feedback, they've been kind of tweaking the formula just ever so slightly in order to improve its performance. And what I had noticed with um, testing the product, and I've done quite a bit of you know, testing. And what I had noticed was when you apply your second coat, it has this tendency, um, I want to I want to say it kind of beads up a little bit, although that's not really the right terminology. Uh, it, it, the second coat will seem to um, kind of pull away from itself and create sort of a like a fisheye type effect. And what they're doing is they're tweaking the formula to improve what they call surface tension so that each subsequent coat will lay down nice and smooth over the previous coat. And right now, you know, I know some of you out there have already ordered and have received your, I can't believe it's not lacquer. And what I would recommend you do is just do a light scuff sanding between coats and the following coats will lay down as smooth as glass. At least that's what I have uh, learn in my testing. So uh, the folks at Solar Res are going to be sending me a new batch of slightly reformulated, I can't believe it's not lacquer. And I'll do some testing on that probably uh, between, probably next week. And then once I get a feel for how that works, I will then shoot video of applying it to this guitar in the week after that. So that one you can expect probably right after uh, the first of the year. And the application process, it, it's going to be pretty simple. It's just a matter of applying it, curing it, level sanding it, and buffing it, pretty much like any other finish. The difference is it's incredibly easy to apply. Uh, you can brush it on or you can spray it. So if you want to know more about Solar Res, I can't believe it's not lacquer, I'll put a link in the description below and then you can go to their website and, and read up on the product um, rather than me explaining it here. So um, that's kind of where things stand with the Solar Res Echo Guitar Project and that should be pretty pretty fun to watch as it, as it proceeds. Now another guitar that I'm working on is my, this is a single cutaway Bravo that I have demonstrated with uh, in the past. Uh, this one is, it has a uh, Crystal Lax Craftnique pigments for the color burst, and then I clear coated it with Crystal Lax Bright Tone. Uh, I first laid down like five coats of the gloss and then finished with three coats of the matte to give this nice matte sheen. So this guitar is very close to being done. I just finished doing the fret work yesterday and all I need to do is wind up and install the pickups and then I can string it up, 
uh, tuna intonate it. I, you know, of course, I have to make the uh, the nut. But uh, this guitar should be done depending on how my schedule goes in the next week or so. But you know, with Christmas and the holidays and everything coming up, it may it may get pushed off to the after the first of the year. We'll we'll see. So this one's getting pretty close. And another project that I'm working on that I haven't talked about yet is I'm building a new guitar. Uh, it'll probably be, I think it's going to be another Bravo single cutaway, but I'm going to do some inlay on the top of the guitar. And here I am committing to something I haven't even really gotten started with yet. So I have this tendency to like to change my mind about designs as I'm working on them. So now I'm committing myself. It has to have inlay on the top. And but what this guitar is going to feature is something really cool. It is a zero fret. And you know zero frets have been around for a long time and I'm not going to get into exactly how they work. Google it if you want to know. But um, they seem to come around every so often and, and there's a resurgence in their popularity. But one of the problems that have always uh, existed with zero frets is retrofitting existing guitars with them. You have to, nowadays they have some uh, kits that you can purchase to install zero frets on an existing guitar, retrofitting. And they're fairly expensive. Well, the folks at Symptoms, which is a fret manufacturer located in Belarus, which I think is west of Moscow in Russia. And they make a new zero fret concept, which is an asymmetrical design. And uh, without getting into the, too many of the specifics, it's just vastly easier to retrofit a guitar with this uh, uh, asymmetrical zero fret design. And they offer a variety of different fret heights as well as different materials, um, nickel, silver, stainless steel, bronze. So you can choose from different um, zero fret options and um, you can uh, select a size which goes with the current frets that you may have installed on a guitar. And of course, this also works on brand new guitars as I will demonstrate. But the one that I'm going to be using, it's an asymmetrical design that does not have a tang like a normal fret would. Instead, it has a, uh, a very slight ridge, raised ridge, that runs along the bottom of the wire. And that ridge corresponds to the highest point of the fret's crown. And it allows you to place it right up against the nut so that your scale length starts where it normally would, right in front of the nut. So um, I'm going to show that one and, and and review that and kind of demonstrate the installation on a future um, Highline Bravo design. So that's really all I've got for this episode. And um, as we finish out 2018 and head into um, 2019, uh, you know, I want to wish everybody uh, a happy holiday and hope that your 2019 starts out fantastic and that the year ahead is going to be uh, prosperous, happy, and you know all that good, wonderful, um, fuzzy feeling stuff. So uh, until the next episode, uh, take care and we will see you soon. Mm -hmm.